December 26, 2004, the day the earth moved, the sea soared and over 275,000 people lost their lives. Over a million people were displaced. Countless families and communities were dispersed. It was the day that the tsunami struck. Mama tsunami and the Gangagawa, Etogoda, tsunami and the Ekapata, Lokurella, Kawa, Vilivella, Me Gaganekogahaganagia, Itapase, Apetata, Kagahua, Itase, Hamomala, Diva, Itapase, Apit, Dua Gila. मैं मुस्लिम पाल दिए थे कि या वो चुनाव में ना आवाज है आवाज में आया पहले पहले आवाज में आके और बात में आधा घंटा बात में ना पानी चढ़ गया चढ़ना का टाइम हम सब लोग का बैग गया मच्छी छोड़ के चले गया मसाले इस वाली कैसे आपस नंबर मुस्कान की जब स्थान शायद वह तो स्मी लगी डुडु डुडु डी दफ the tsunami devastated local communities and economies, and once the ocean receded, people began picking up the pieces. International agencies came in with both short-term survival help and long-term restoration. But the Asian continent is a hazard-prone area. Basically, the whole supermarket of disasters is in Asia. We are in the Pacific Ring of Fire, all the fault lines are there. We are exposed to cyclones, we are exposed to climate change, um, we are also exposed to water uh, issues, whether it's a shortage or excess. Um, and in addition, uh, the rapid urbanization as well as migration from uh, rural to urban communities has also compounded uh, uh, the effects of natural disasters. Given the region's propensity for natural hazards, the current mode of response would only succeed in making communities dependent on external agents. Often the question is asked, uh, aren't you really making these communities dependent by having relief and rehabilitation programs driven, driven by outside agencies? Yes, this has been the case. Uh, this has been the rule more than the exception, which should not be the case. Uh, we have seen even in the tsunami recovery process, the communities have been made really dependent. The solution therefore lay in making communities more independent and capable of coping with hazards. To do this, communities have to be made self-reliant, live in a self-sustaining manner and be completely informed about natural hazards and evasive action. This was the genesis of the Tsunami Learning Project spread across three countries most impacted by the tsunami. All three projects were very uh, unique projects because uh, they were not the run-of-the-mill kind of implementation programs and at the same time they were addressing something which is very very critical uh, in a recovery phase and that is to restore people's self-respect. The Tsunami Learning Project sought to impart lessons that matter and these lessons would save lives. We can't keep putting band-aids on the world. You know, we have to make sure that communities at risk are able to be resilient, are able to find solutions for themselves on how they're going to make themselves less vulnerable and how they're going to be able to take care of themselves. Three countries, three very different initiatives. In the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in India, the lessons that matter come from microcredit and the attempt to make people self-reliant. In Lagosatwa in Sri Lanka, the lessons that matter come from the implementation of an eco-village and living as a community in a sustainable manner. In Banda Aceh in Indonesia, the lessons that matter come from a tsunami resource centre that is linked with the formal academic sector and trains communities on coping with a hazardous world. Andaman and Nicobar Islands lies in the Bay of Bengal, one of the most scenic parts of India. It bore the wrath of the tsunami and reeled under its impact. The Indian government and a variety of agencies rushed in to provide relief and rehabilitation. The foods were distributed, the sanitations were looked after by the government and by the NGOs and even by the local peoples. Later, after uh, they were shifted to the intermediate shelters, uh, then the questions of uh, continuous free rations, monthly rations 
started and uh, it uh, all happened like it is continuous till this day the impact on the local economy was devastating fishermen fish sellers small businesses along the coast were worst affected by the disaster months later people hadn't yet begun returning back to normal it is true that the disaster situation is such that nobody would uh, be in position to work but uh, uh, to revive from the situation you need to work and uh, because you are getting so such a high grants the people had come to this position that they did not want to work help people back on their feet by helping them with livelihood this was the idea behind the swayam micro credit initiative launched by seeds swayam is a hindi word that means by myself and it connotes self reliance the swayam micro credit program was introduced uh, for the people affected by the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. Uh, SEEDS introduced this program in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands uh, where there was large scale devastation because of the tsunami. And uh, what we felt was that uh, there was large scale doles being given out to the people by the government. Uh, and this continued, uh, it seemed to continue forever. Uh, because it was almost six months after the tsunami and people that were affected uh, had not yet kind of come to terms with the, with the disaster and they were unwilling in many ways to come back to their occupation and restore their normal lives. The goal was clear. The path is not grant or aid. It is income generation help people with microcredit to restart their livelihood and in the act of repayment they will find their dignity and self esteem again this was not just about giving them money but it was about uh, you know restoring their own self respect restoring their own uh, uh, their own inherent strength to live their uh, lives setu pichai was a tea seller in the andaman and nicobar islands the tsunami destroyed his tea stall and he needed money to start a new one. But he was not eligible for a loan or a grant. Abdul Ghafoor ran a computer institute in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands that was damaged by the tsunami. He needed money to get his institute back on its feet. Bank loans were difficult to come by. Apana was a fisherman. His boats and nets were damaged in the tsunami. Having lost his fishing license, he was neither eligible for aid nor a loan. These are just three of the nearly 100 people who got back on their feet as a result of Swayam microcredit program. Swayam targeted people who would otherwise not be eligible for a loan or even a grant. People who did not suffer direct losses on account of the tsunami, but more indirect losses in terms of a loss of livelihood. These were people like fishermen whose nets were damaged or fish sellers who needed to pay a deposit or owners of tea stalls or petty shopkeepers. People who belong to the informal sector and yet who played an important role in the local economy. Seeds work together with the community to identify potential recipients. No, we didn't have a farm, we didn't have any damage, we didn't have a little bit of damage, but we didn't have a little bit of damage. Then, in the last year, we had four children, we didn't have a license for renewal for a year. इसलिए तुमको नए दे करके बोल के बाबू लोग बोल दी। Almost I was having six, ten computers and four to five computers were damaged in the tsunami or earthquake. So I required at least of two to three systems on that particular day. And somebody who is going to help me, I was searching for people and I approached the banks also. It was very difficult to get loans at that time. Government authorized banks are. Uh, recognize certain set of parameters uh, which actually uh, excludes a lot of such people because of their informal nature because um, the occupation does not guarantee them uh, n number of days of work therefore you know there are no collaterals and therefore loans are not extended to such people one of the key aims of swayam microcredit program was to build linkages between local communities and the banking system for that, uh, we had uh, consulted a number of banks and then finally we came up with the uh, State Bank of India, which is also a lead bank for Andaman Nicobar Island. And uh, uh, we finalized with this bank uh, and the system was developed as such that ki, uh, we'll keep a lien of uh, uh, the same amount as of the uh, loan being given to the beneficiary through State Bank of India. Apart from this, uh, we'll uh, give uh, 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 saving uh, which would be as 
initially the interest would be paid by the beneficiaries to this bank and the amount of interest which uh, they had paid will be repaid back to them as a saving uh, for their further development. However, it wasn't that simple. To begin with, beneficiaries had to understand the concept of a loan and more importantly, the concept of repayment. Initially, it was very difficult to make these people understand uh, 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 the, to have this loan, to have this grant, uh, not this grant, to have uh, this uh, support as a loan and which needs to be paid back to the bank. Uh, it was like we had to do a couple of meetings and a couple of uh, uh, interaction with the community going into their houses, their villages and making them understand the use of this loan through bank which would add to their further development in future. We would call the uh, beneficiaries for a managerial training which is done by the bank uh, and uh, see the staff. It, this training is a simple uh, one of keeping how to keep a book of uh, simple book of accounts and how to do the profit and loss documentation, simple documentations. This was necessary as uh, most of the beneficiaries were uh, uh, I mean low educated people. So they did not have this idea of keeping a book of account which would be helpful in the future and to assess their profit and loss. In the office, we have to understand us. After understanding us, we have to do our dessert that will be 50,000. Then we have to take the 50,000 and take the whole thing in the store. Slowly, we have to take the loan to the state bank. And slowly, it will be completed. I got a lot of money, 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 I got a lot of money. और इससे कमती मिला तो 500 करके बांधता था। हमको बोला आप लोगों को गुरु बना लो, बनाना का बहुत तो नॉन देगा। मैडम कितना नॉन देगा? हम 5000 नॉन देगा। वो 5000 नॉन हमको मिला, एक डोंगे को पर में हम दिया था। नॉन काम हो गया था, फिर पूछा एक लाख रुपए, एक लाख रुपए देना को तैयार है। Swayam Microcredit Program was not just about granting loans, it was about changing mindsets. It helped people save and understand the concept of insurance. Every asset purchased with a Swayam loan had to be insured. We had also found that ki, uh, the in number of insurance uh, done by the uh, petty traders and the fisherwomen was very, very low. So to bring this concept of ensuring their business and their activities was very important. Hence, what we did, uh, we had insured their business for the first year and the and next onward years they would be insuring by themselves. Today, Setu Pichai runs a tea stall in Port Blair, serving his customers with a smile. Today, Abdul Gafur runs a computer training institute with all his computers intact. Today, Apanna goes out to fish in his own boat and with his own nets. Each person who has benefited from the Swayam microcredit program has had the pride in having paid back their loans and the security of having insurance that will help them in case of another disaster. What we uh, experienced as a result of this uh, intervention was that uh, even though this was very invisible kind of an intervention because, uh, you know, it wasn't formally announced uh, in a big way. There weren't very big uh, amounts of loans or there weren't many, very many beneficiaries. Of course, there were about uh, 100 or so. It actually reached out to society in a very lasting way. Uh, we felt that people really uh, could uh, feel that somebody out there has recognized their right to live with self-respect and dignity. Sometimes, in our eagerness to help, we forget the dignity of those we want to help. The Swayam Microcredit Program addresses that. On the face of it, Damyam Gama village in the Lagoswata district of Sri Lanka is just another village in rural South Asia. People live, work and get together for community occasions. Children play, go to school and have fun. All is calm and peaceful and it looks like a community that has lived together in harmony for generations. However, Damniam Gama is a new village. 
a village set up along the age-old traditions of living in harmony with each other and nature. The eco village in Damniamgama was set up by Sarvodaya. Sri Lanka consists mainly of rural communities and the concept of eco village is really nothing new to our country. By and large, the rural communities in Sri Lanka have been living in harmony with nature. They were sustainable communities because they were not exploiting their environment. They were uh, really having a sustainable lifestyle in terms of really being able to sustain their own needs without relying too much on outside. So all these elements were already there. But what had happened is due to so called development during the last maybe 60 years since development, we have lost most of the uh, roots of such self-sustainability. An eco-village is based on the theory of building a sustainable environment for living. People need to live in harmony with each other and with the environment and look inwards to overcome any adversity. When the tsunami disaster happened in 2004, uh, we had the opportunity uh, to create new villages because as we all know some of the communities which were affected by the tsunami could not re uh, return back to their original places of residence. So they had to be constructed new houses. So we thought it was not just building a new, not just rebuilding, but can we not create at least a few examples of ecological living, balanced living through creation of an eco-village. Spread across five acres, the village is home to 55 families that survived the tsunami. These families came from villages, coastal villages, which were not really permanent, uh, uh, they didn't have permanent structures as their houses. They were not used to proper sanitation. So, leaving aside the basic principles of ecological living, they were not used to a normal community life. But we were able to have this very strong social mobilization process, bringing them together and then making them a part of the entire construction process of this new eco-village. Anoma Nimali was a refugee after the tsunami. Today, she has a home, a kitchen garden that sustains her family, modern electronics and more. She makes use of a variety of income generation schemes to add to her household income. Priya Dasa lost his home and business in the tsunami. Today, he is the local shopkeeper and a village elder. Sarvodaya gave him a grant with which he purchased a three-wheeler and started a shop. Now he has a home garden and hopes to start mushroom farming too. His plans are to expand the shop. The village features 55 eco-friendly houses, a multi-purpose community centre, a playground, ample supply of water, a comprehensive road network and expansive green areas. The houses and the community center are equipped with solar panels for electricity. The villagers receive water through five drinking wells and 14 rainwater harvesting tanks. The village also incorporates a recycling facility for solid waste materials. From the very beginning, we thought that we will take into account the natural setting of the village because what you usually do is you just level the land and then just uh, plan out uh, uh, 55 uh, houses, that is what you usually do. But we said no, we will make a, a proper scientific assessment of the, the, the topography, what are the natural resources there, we will not cut down the trees. Even before we started the construction, we engaged in a dialogue with the community and the experts who were involved in the designing explained to the community that this is not going to be an ordinary village. Even the house designs will be unique where we try to uh, design the houses in a way that we obtain say the maximum natural light, have natural ventilation and re reduce the amount of energy that we have to use and so on. A key concept of the eco-village is sustenance and self-reliance. Each home comes with a garden and villagers ensure food sufficiency by growing a variety of vegetables and cash crops such as mushrooms. Earlier the people, many of them 
didn't know how to cultivate a garden because they didn't have uh, land in uh, in their first uh, village. Now, uh, after in, they came to this place and we trained them how to cultivate and how to uh, it help to your income and to your day-to-day uh, -day earnings and how to from the kitchen after uh, several months they got uh, good harvest uh, and it helps to uh, uh, their uh, um, foods uh, then uh, they knew how important for their life uh, to uh, cultivation Kumudu Salgado believes that the eco village is a good village honda i think itapu parisare eta wada hondai i think are අපට හැම දෙයක්ම කියා දීලා තියෙනවා කසල කරම නා කරනේ ගෙවත්තක් හදන විදිය ඒවා දැන් ඔය මස් රූම් ඉඳන් කියලා දුන්නේ ආයතනේ ඉස්සර නම බවලා තියෙන්නේ දැම්මේ නැහැ ඒ ගොඩක් එහෙම බවලා තමයි කෑවේ වත්තේ ඉතින් හොඳයි කියලා තමයි කියන්නේ ඉනෝකා රත්වාතා සෙල්ස් වෙජිටබල්ස් ඉන් ද විලේජ් She says that earlier they didn't know about home gardens or about waste management. ඒ ඒ වැඩසටහන් වලට ඒ හැම එකකටම අපි සර්වෝදය ආයතනයට ගොඩාක් ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා. ඒ නිලධාරී මහත් මහත්මින්ටත් ගොඩාක් ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා. මොකද අපට ඒ අපේ දැන් ඉස්සලා කලින් තිබුණු ජීවන රටාවට වඩා අලු ජීවන රටාවක් නැවත අපිට ලබා දීලා අපේ දරුවන්ටත් ඒ මගේ යන්න සලස්සලා දීප එක ගැන සර්වෝදය ආයතනයට ගොඩාක් ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා For a community to be self sustaining it has to do most things on its own without outside intervention It's keeping this in mind that the concept of shramdan or donation of labor was introduced right at the outset in the community The village collectively donates labor for village cleanliness and other community activities Chaminder Pushpa Kumar is a maker of binding blocks for a local publishing house. He is also the chairman of the Damniam Gama Shramdan Committee. Shramdan vyapari kenne api thin atam verla thano inda di apita ehema deyak athi unne na sami samagam wala wenna thibena mehedi hari kaha vela vela mun mehema katti ekak thibena maase antimata ekathu rasimak pawatala api podu weda pilibandama saakatta karala ape thiyena karu karana me විසඳ ගන්න අපි කට්ටි එකතු වෙලා කරන ව්‍යාපාර. ශ්‍රමදාන ව්‍යාපාරය අපි ශ්‍රමදාන සමිතිය වගේ අපි මාසෙට කක්කෝ දෙකක් ශ්‍රමදාන මේ ව්‍යාපාර කරන. ඒ කියන්නේ ශ්‍රම ගමේ නිවාඩ දවසක් බලලා කට්ටි පොදු නිවාඩ දවසක් බලලා ඒකදී කට්ටි ඔක්කොම එක අහවිල වෙලා මේ ඔය ගමේ තියෙන පොදු මොකක්කෝ වැඩ පිළිවෙල වෙලා එක කාන සුද්ද කිරීම නැත්තම් ලින් ගමේ තියෙන පොදු මොනවාද දෙයක් එක අහවිලා ගමේ කට්ටි එදාට එක අහවිලා තමයි වැඩ සටහන් කරන්නේ. One of the key aspects of sustainable development is to minimize waste and encourage recycling and reuse. And this is a factor that is internalized by the village. From dried coconut boundaries to natural fertilizers, from rainwater harvesting to waste separation, the villagers are involved in making the community truly eco-friendly. Damniam Gama is a community that can be a model for villages across the globe to live in a self-sustaining manner. Since we initiated the eco village that is since the family the 55 families have started living in this village we have gone through now nearly two and a half years so we have learnt a lot uh, the concept is very viable people can really relate to the concept and not only that they can relate to the concept but also really adopt a certain lifestyle which is uh, in line with this thinking of eco village sustainable uh, living so as a concept it's very sound in terms of replication i think it is definitely repli replicable the people have to consciously adopt this i don't think you can can just go and plant the same design anywhere else it has to be ad uh, adopted to the local conditions where you have to first study what are the ecosystems uh, that exist in that place where you want to create this uh, model uh, what are the support systems available it cannot just function in isolation damniam gama is a community that has managed to spring back despite adversity that lives in a manner that is sustainable 
and works in a manner that will possibly protect them from future hazards and lives in peace, prosperity and harmony with each other and nature. Banda Aceh 2008 This is a typical school here. Children study, play and have fun. Yet most of them are impacted by the tsunami that struck in 2004. <laughs> Pagi-pagi itu pergi ke rumah teman, melompat tepi, lalu tiba-tiba bergoyang sedikit. Teman saya bilang sama saya, eh ada ada goyang. Lalu saya saya keluar da dari rumah itu, tiba-tiba su su sudah beras gempanya. Less than 255 kilometers from the epicenter of the tsunami, it paid a terrible price losing 200,000 people, over 70% of its coastal population. Over four kilometers along Aceh's coast was flattened. While aid and relief restored most of the material damage, there was another aspect that could not be addressed by external agencies. How do you come to terms with a disaster like this, where almost every family has faced a loss? How do you come to terms with a loss of this magnitude? What we need to do uh, is to make sure that the people who died from disasters don't just remain a statistic. They are people who had families, people who had lives, people who had livelihoods, people who were part of the community, people who were part of the nation. And having a resource centre that will really try to to um, you know capture that the essence, that loss, was something very personal, very deep, uh, and, and that makes it much easier for people to internalize uh, the risks and also then to act on it. While it is important to have a memorial so that people don't forget those who died, it is equally important to learn from the disaster and pass on that learning to the community. Bagi masyarakat yang nantinya adalah wadah ini, uh, Tsunami Resource Center ini adalah untuk uh, mensosialisasikan program-program informasi-informasi pengetahuan tentang sifat dan bentuk bencana kepada masyarakat yang intinya uh, dilandasi oleh background peristiwa tsunami pada tanggal 26 Desember 2004 di THC yang disebabkan adalah kurangnya pemahaman dan pengetahuan daripada masyarakat tentang itu yang akhirnya adalah berdampak pada banyaknya korban yang ditimbulkan daripada tsunami itu tersendiri. Nah, oleh karena itu, dari hasil meeting itu, kita berpikir bahwa perlu membentuk suatu wadah yang nantinya bisa memberikan informasi kepada masyarakat, setidaknya lah informasi minimal yang bisa kita sampaikan kepada masyarakat apabila di masa mendatang terjadinya proses yang sama, bahaya tsunami, ini masyarakat sudah mempunyai kesiapsiagaan untuk itu. The Tsunami Resource Centre was set up by Mercy Malaysia and was a method of building resilient communities by sensitizing them to risks due to natural hazards and by disseminating knowledge. The Resource Centre is not just a, a repository of information of a place where people can get knowledge, but rather it is also linked to the Department of Education in the uh, University of Shakola, and through that what we're hoping to do is to ensure that the Department of Education starts teaching its you know, teachers to be uh, on disaster risk reduction and these teachers will take this knowledge to schools and to children when they're deployed uh, and, and make disaster risk reduction something which is commonplace. Set up in collaboration with Sia Kuala University Banda Aceh, the Tsunami Resource Centre is a key resource channel in the training of undergraduate trainee teachers 
teacher training and education in Syahwala University. Uh, tujuan utamanya adalah untuk mendidik calon-calon guru. Uh, sebagai salah satu kegiatan untuk memperkenalkan bagaimana menghadapi bencana, itu adalah kami yang kami tempuh secara akademik itu adalah mensosialisasi kegiatan ini kepada mahasiswa. Mahasiswa kami itu nantinya akan menjadi guru-guru di seluruh wilayah di Aceh. Dan kami berpikir bahwa adalah sebuah langkah sangat strategis apabila bagaimana langkah-langkah menghadapi bencana ini diberikan kepada mahasiswa. Dan mahasiswa nantinya itu akan melakukan praktek ke sekolah-sekolah. Mahasiswa akan menyampaikan ide-ide bagaimana menghadapi bencana itu kepada siswa. Dan siswa nantinya akan menyampaikan ide-ide bagaimana penyelamatan terhadap bencana itu kepada masyarakat dalam konteks yang lebih luas. Kami pikir bahwa langkah akademik yang dilakukan oleh FK berkenaan dengan bagaimana mengajarkan masyarakat dalam tanda petik masyarakat di situ adalah termasuk juga ini mahasiswa, termasuk siswa, termasuk guru, termasuk juga dosen itu adalah langkah-langkah yang strategis secara akademik itu akan memperkenalkan bagaimana cara-cara penyelamatan ketika kita menghadapi sebuah musibah. The Tsunami Resource Center was set up to facilitate information exchange awareness creation and training local communities. In addition, the resource center is a place where young people come, children, uh, and the best people to teach are really children because children not only go back to teach their own friends, but they also go home to teach their families. Housing a training center, computer laboratory, and an administration office, the Tsunami Resource Center hopes to reach all levels of society to fully equip the people of Aceh with knowledge regarding disaster preparedness, thus ensuring a safer and more secure future for all. As with other initiatives, the key here was involving the local community and tailoring solutions according to their needs. Uh, conceptually, um, we wanted this resource centre to be something that would capture the whole essence of we should not forget. We should not forget the disaster, we should not forget the lives, we should not forget that we have a responsibility to ensure this doesn't happen again in future. So in, in concept, um, it was easy to, to think about that, then how do you actually link it to everyday practice? Then the challenge was to actually find the partners. We needed to find an, an educational institution that would take this concept we should not forget and ensure that it's it's replicated, you know, it's, it's going to be something that's uh, going to be used by the community. Um, and also, you know, using, finding the tools, uh, finding the right um, people to actually do this in a community which basically didn't have disaster risk reduction as part of their everyday lives. We will not forget those who died and how they could have been saved. And we will use that memory, information and knowledge for a better future. The Tsunami Resource Center, Aceh. The Tsunami Learning Project looked to chart the learnings from the recovery and reconstruction effort in the impacted regions of Andaman and Nicobar Islands in India, Kalutura District in Sri Lanka, and Banda Aceh in Indonesia. The benefits and the outcomes of this project can be uh, categorized in three layers. One was at the bottom layer, which is the implementation of the project itself. At the uh, second uh, level was the institutional learning, both in terms of the staff who were implementing the programs as well as the institution in itself. For the staff, you know, they were involved in such large-scale recovery for the first time. Going through the whole Im implementation, they have actually learned a lot. Now that learning has to be documented somewhere so that in subsequent disasters in future, uh, this learning can be actually used by the staff and at the third level, uh, what this project has really done is that it has uh, provided us with uh, some very solid inputs on learning uh, which need to feed into the formal academic process. Uh, so the association with Kyoto University in this program actually helped. The Tsunami Learning Project is supported by the Force of Nature Foundation, Malaysia. I would like to give them the credit for going along with us uh, on this project, which had very uh, intangible benefits. And, uh, you know, unlike many other donors who want to see, uh, you know, the, the, the result of their uh, support to agencies, 
in very physical uh, forms and tangibles. Here was one agency who was willing to invest in learning. It's so easy to give money to build something or to feed people or to reconstruct a school or reconstruct a home. But many people don't realize that capturing knowledge and ensuring that knowledge can be replicated, ensuring that knowledge can be used to ensure there's sustainability, there's this is not going to happen again in future, not only in that place, but also in other parts of the world, is something which many people don't grasp the value of. Lessons that matter. Lessons that will save lives.